So, hello, my name is Arianna Foschi and I'm a PhD student uh, at uh, Istituto Superior Tecnico in Lisbon. Do you have uh, any role models and if yes, uh, can you tell us who they are? So, I wouldn't say uh, she's a role model, but uh, a person who certainly inspired me when I was younger was uh, Margherita Hack, an Italian astrophysicist, who was also the first woman to run the observatory of uh, Trieste. And she was uh, really involved in uh, outreach, so she wrote a lot of books and she did uh, interviews talking about uh, the universe and the mysteries of the universe. And so I remember that when I was a kid, um, I was really fascinated uh, by what she was telling us. And so when uh, I needed to decide what to study at the university, uh, even if I was not really good at math, I remember those times where I was super fascinating about uh, the universe and I decided to study physics uh, in any case. And in the end, uh, it, it went well. And what kind of advice would you give to s somebody younger who wants to pursue a career in astronomy? So I would say that uh, you should still keep doing uh, um, what makes you feel uh, well, like uh, if you have any hobby or uh, sport that you like to do, you should certainly continue doing it because uh, sometimes uh, when you start studying physics or astronomy, the amount of, of work and the amount of things that you need to study and learn seems uh, huge and uh, unbearable, and so many people decided to s sacrifice uh, whatever else, just to focus on uh, physics and exams and studying, uh, and, and this is okay, but uh, I would say that uh, for your mental health, it's also good that you have uh, something else uh, to do besides uh, physics. Okay. Uh, can you now Tell us a little bit about your research. How would you explain this to uh, to, a high, uh, to an elementary school? Yeah, so I'm uh, currently working with um, uh, studying uh, the motion of stars at the Galactic Center, so orbit uh, very close to the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. So to a kid, I would say that uh, as uh, the Earth and uh, other planets of the solar system orbits uh, around uh, the sun. Um, at the center of our galaxy, there is also a huge mass and, um, and stars orbit uh, around it. And uh, you probably don't know it, but this motion depends on uh, the properties of the central mass. So either the sun in our solar system or the supermassive black hole at the galactic center. And so looking uh, at how stars move and at their orbit, we can understand uh, what's, uh, what's at the center, what's the, the compact object uh, at the center. And how would you do it for, uh, for a stu physics student? So, uh, as, probably, uh, as you probably know, uh, the current theory of uh, gravity is uh, Einstein's general relativity, who predict that the presence of a huge mass bend the space-time uh, around it. So, at the galactic center, there is a supermassive black hole, which has uh, 10 to the 6 solar masses in a, in a region of space which is extremely small. And so, we are trying to um, we model this supermassive black hole as uh, a Newtonian uh, monopole. So, but we try to add also other components, such as uh, extended mass distribution around it. And we study the motion of stars around the supermassive black hole to understand if we can constrain this, um, this model of uh, extended masses. And of course, uh, this is related with the dark matter problem, for instance, uh, because we don't know much about uh, dark matter, but we know that it interacts uh, gravitationally with baryonic matter. So it makes sense uh, to look for dark matter where gravity is in its strongest regime. And in this sense, uh, the galactic center is the perfect laboratory because we have uh, a supermassive black hole, so we have uh, stars uh, orbiting around it. So we can try to put strain on dark matter distributions at the galactic center. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe.